We're going to taste the 2013 bourbon, uh, which was finished in an Armagnac cask, part of the Bakta 50 cask. This is my first foray, right? Our first foray back into whiskey since Whistlepig. So it is a big moment, uh, one with a lot of history, actually. So 2013, 10 years old. Um, but the inspiration of finishing this in an Armagnac cask came, ooh, look at that. Uh, beautiful color. Oh, yeah. Beautiful color. Amber. You see the legs just treacly on this stuff, even just getting poured into the glass. Oh, this will warm you up. This is, this is, wow. So here's my philosophy uh, on spirits overall. So Leo here is my best friend and is my co-founder in the business. We've known each other since, uh, since high school, really, and went to college together. The, but what you look for in a good friend and what you look for in a spirit is the same kind of thing. But these attributes are normally inversely related. So the more character you have, the less smooth the person generally is. The smoother the person is, the less character they normally have. And what you're looking for is large amount of both smoothness and character, which are very rare to find. So what I love about this is your normal bourbon oh, wow. is Delicious. a... Bourbon is America's national spirit. It's America's national spirit for many reasons, uh, most of them good. Uh, but a bourbon... Uh, a bourbon can be, I don't want to say plain Jane, um, and we have these vintages going back so far in time, so I'm a little spoiled. I look for a spirit with a lot of character and a lot of depth, and as a 10-year-old bourbon starting point, 2013 vintage, it has a lot of that. But what we did in finishing the Armagnac cast gave it an entirely new and higher dimension of complexity to the spirit, which is coming out at barrel proof at, you know, somewhere in the 108 uh, proof range department. What do you say, Leo? Yeah, I, I think that's right, Raj. And one of the things that I think you, you sort of grow to appreciate other spirits a little bit better when you've spent some time, actually a lot of time over the last couple of years focused on Armagnac. Armagnac is incredible in terms of its complexity, its nuance, the Ooh. the arrays of flavors this that present good. present itself to you. Whereas bourbon, uh, it's based on corn, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you're distilling uh, spirit from a corn base, you're gonna have a relatively narrow band of expressions that are gonna manifest themselves in the spirit even after aging. Um, so we get spoiled a little bit in Armagnac, but what we've done with what was inherently actually a magnificent bourbon to begin with in its own state, this 2013 distillate, mm. we, we decided to kick it up a little bit, of a, not, a little bit of a notch and to tie it back to the spirit that we've really come to love and appreciate over the last couple of years through, uh, through what's essentially an Armagnac cask finish. So... I mean, you get the standard vanilla. Mm -hmm. You get some of the corn notes. Like corn flakes, right, on the nose especially. Uh, but then you get this, you know, plum, raisin. I almost, it's got notes to me of like, you know, like a Christmas cake. Those mm -hmm. very rich Christmas cakes. Yep. Really multi, like a lot of different flavors. Yeah, like rum-soaked almost. Rum-soaked yeah. Christmas cake. Mm-hmm. But there's a dryness and a tannic structure that sort of binds this all together. It doesn't taste like a pure corn-based distillate. There is something a little bit more than you have going on with most bourbons. And I think that, that so dryness, that You know that what's balance, rare about this one? Mm. This is a 99% uh, corn bourbon, very rare mash bill. The to do pure spirits um, is normally more difficult than, than putting some malt or putting some rye. Uh, into the mixture. So this is an extremely rare mash bill that comes to us from Indiana. The, and, uh, you know, really lovely by itself. We tasted it by itself a little bit earlier. I mean, as, as this opens up a little, I just start to get like candied apple notes and uh, 
like stewed fruits, Raj. You had mentioned plums earlier, and I, I think that's there. There's almost like a, but there's there's a little zip a little here chocolate. too. Like oh yeah, there, yeah, dark chocolate, mocha, like cocoa powder. You remember when you were a kid and you opened the Nestle's quick jar? and you just got that whiff of cocoa powder, I, I get a hint of that I, here. I can say something with great confidence, mm. that if you like bourbon, yeah. right, and you like really good bourbon, you're gonna love this. The If you like a standard bourbon, like I just like 80 proof, regular old, plain bourbon that you can get anywhere, you know, stick with it. The If you're looking for something that's really extraordinary, unusual, the Bacta 2013 bourbon finished in the 50-year-old 1868 to 1970 cask is like nothing you'll have ever had before in a good way. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I joke now that I've been drinking Armagnac for the last couple of years and participating in the product development that I almost can't drink whiskey anymore because Armagnac to me is just such an elevated tasting experience. But this is the sort of whiskey that could get me back into whiskey.